of the pruning workshops that I do this time of the year are, are traveling all over the place in North Carolina, pruning blueberries and, and, and teaching folks how to do that. And I think we really struck a nerve with blueberry pruning workshops because there's a lot of interest in them. But that's what I hope you get out of this. I hope what you get out of this is, is okay, I know what to do with my blueberry bush when I get home and I'm gonna prune that thing. Sometimes uh, when you go to the store and you go to buy a blueberry, they'll be selling a northern high bush type that doesn't do well here. So what I'm going to steer you towards is called a rabbit eye blueberry. It's a rabbit eye species and it's a much more uh, vigorous and much better adapted uh, plant to this part of the country. You'll see uh, listed blueberry types by areas of the state. So high bush for the western mountains, rabbit eye statewide, and then high bush and southern high bush in the coastal plain. So it really, really does matter which, which one you get. When I plant a blueberry bush, I take all the flower buds off at the time of planting. And when you, when you go buy a blueberry plant in the nursery, this time of year, you, you get this nice big bush with all these nice fat little flower buds out on the ends of the stems. I cut the top off before I ever set it in the ground. Because I don't want any flower buds left on the plant. I just want a few sticks sticking up out of the ground. And what that does is forces the plant to grow vegetative. What makes a good blueberry site? Uh, site selection is going to be the most important decision that you make. Because if you, if you choose a site that, uh, that won't drain, that has too high a clay content, or it's in the shade, you're planting these blueberries for long term, so they're, you're going to be looking at that, that mistake for a long time. They're going to, they're going to struggle. Uh, uh, so I'd really love to see you uh, planting in a, a, a site that has a low pH, good drainage. Uh, you're going to have to think about water. You're going to have to add organic matter. Just select a well-drained site, full sun, open porous soil, pH between 4 and 5. If, you're, uh, if you've got a high pH site and you're trying to bring the, the pH down, uh, Typically what you're going to do is, is use elemental sulfur. And elemental sulfur of itself, is not, it's not a chemical reaction that reduces the pH. What you do is you put the sulfur out and then you have a, uh, a bacterial conversion of sulfur to sulfuric acid over time. And that takes months. So typically what I would do uh, with a blueberry site if the pH is say 6 or 6.5 is I would apply sulfur and then wait six to eight months later and test the soil again. And by that time the sulfur is broken down, the soil is acidified, and, and then if the pH is right, then you plant it. So blueberries are, are, really, uh, are really an acid-loving plant. Um, you're going to adjust fertility. You're going to select the correct blueberry species for your area. So Blueberries uh, will not make a berry without a pollinating insect visiting the flower. So pollinators are extremely important for, for fruit production. You just won't get berries without a bee or some kind of visiting flower. The native insects don't look like honeybees, but they're still pollinators. So you'll see things that look like miniature bumblebees or that look like a sweat bee or something that looks like a wasp, but it's completely black and shiny. There's all these wild pollinator insects that are going to be on your blueberry flowers in the spring, and they're doing great things, but they don't, often don't look like honeybees. Uh, we also talk some about cross-pollination um, because if you have um, one blueberry uh, variety, say I plant 10 premier bushes, I'll still get blueberries. They'll pollinate with premier pollen as long as the bees are out there working them. But the, the berries will have more seeds in them and they'll be larger if you have two varieties. So you'd have, uh, say, premier and climax or premier and tip blue two different varieties so the bees can pollinate between the two. So uh, typically when I, when I plant blueberries, it's just a small planting, I want at least two varieties uh, so they can cross pollinate. Not essential, you still get berries, but, but they'll be, uh, be bigger. What I typically do when I go out to, to look at a site with someone and they're thinking about planting blueberries is I go with a set of post hole diggers and I go start digging holes. And if I bring something up and I can, uh, I can roll it into a ball 
and it stays in a ball, it's, it's a heavy clay, then I say, that, gee, this is not the best, best site for, for blueberries. If you try to roll it into a ball and it crumbles and sort of falls out of your hand, then it's, then it's well aerated enough for, for blueberry production. So what do you do if you do have a, a clay site? You go up. So you build a raised bed. You can mix some of your existing soil in, but you want to use pine bark and organic matter to aerify that soil, aerate the soil. On a clay soil, the thing that's most missing with blueberries is air in the root zone. So you're, you're going to, uh, uh, last blueberry field I planted that required amending, uh, we used a whole lot of pine bark. We used uh, uh, like 100 cubic yards to the acre. So that's, that's pine bark that deep and, and that wide down the road. Tilled it in with the existing soil, pulled it up into a mound, and planted it down that row, and then put, put the pine bark on the top. So if you've got a site that needs, needs that kind of amendment, that's the way to go. I get the question, okay, what's the simplest thing? Just tell me how to plant a blueberry bush. And uh, so uh, the simple version is go get a bag of pine bark mulch, okay? You want the, the mulch and not the nuggets. You want the fine particles in it. Dump it on the top of the ground, mix it in with your existing soil, pull it up into a mound, and plant in that and keep it wet. And that's, that's blueberry production. So uh, the problems I see with blueberries in North Carolina on our, on our soils is they're very often too fine textured and uh, too much clay content. So that's, that's our struggle. Okay, uh, let me show you a little bit about um, pruning tools. These are my, my uh, pruning shears. That's, that's an old set of pruning shears. These are, these are made by Felco. And uh, that's the brand that I like, but there's lots of good ones out there. Corona makes some, some good pruners. Um, I've seen some good ones from Fiskars. So, uh, but, but this is, this is kind of the, the most expensive ones. And I, I hope you'll try them out and, and feel how light they are. And, and uh, this is just a, just a nice set of pruning shears. So, if you got so anyway, that's, uh, that's the tool that I use the most for pruning blueberries. Uh, I also have a set of hand pruners. And, uh, if I forget these and leave them in the truck, it's okay because I don't use them that much. But if I forget these, then I have to go back and get them because that's what I'm doing the pruning with. Uh, and uh, typically when I'm sharpening pruners, I'm just using a little steel that's got an abrasive coating on it. So that's all you need to, uh, to sharpen them if you sharpen them routinely. What you're looking at is a two-dimensional drawing of different canes coming up out of the ground. So the, the older ones are, are uh, black colored, the younger ones I've drawn in is red colored. And this is what blueberries do over time. If you just leave them to their own devices, they form a big clump. So they don't stay in a bush, they want to, to form a mound. The first thing we'll, we'll do when we go prune is look for canes that are coming up outside of this circle. And the circle is just entirely in my mind. It's me walking up to the bush and saying, okay, that's as big as I'm going to let that bush get. It doesn't matter if it's the prettiest cane on the bush. If it's outside the footprint, I cut it off. Just go ahead and prune back to the crown. But that's my first move on, on blueberry pruning because I want to be in charge of how big the bush is going to get. But my, my goal is to always have something I can reach into and reach all the fruit and that I can walk around because they are I'd say they are a clump forming plant. You'll have a blueberry bush undisturbed, especially some of these really vigorous rabbit eye blueberry bushes that will eventually get as big as this room where these tables are. Uh, but what you're after is a, is a multi trunk plant. And you'd like to have all different ages coming out of the ground. The new canes are going to be red colored. And the, as they get older, they eventually turn from brown to gray. So you can tell what, what age they are. And I like to have new red canes coming out of the ground to replace the old ones. So when I get ready for this great big cane in the middle of the bush to go, when it ages out, I'm going to cut it off all the way down here. And I already want one in place to replace it. So you'll have a, an old cane and one that's two or three years old right next to it that's filling that space. So it's phasing out canes over, over a number of years, all different ages coming out of the ground. So if you're bringing along new canes to replace the old ones, then suddenly you've got, you've got a lot of things in there that are, that are just side by side, just canes that are right in each other's way. 
And at that point, I'm selectively taking out the old one and I'm leaving the, the younger cane to replace it. And the other thing is the berry size goes down. And the other thing you're going to do as you prune blueberries is you're going to take out something called crossovers. And, and crossovers are a cane that comes up through the bush and then goes sideways. Instead of growing up, it's, it's crooked. And the way you get crossovers is, is uh, really simple. When, they, when the bush grows and it produces fruit, the weight of the fruit pulls the branches down. And when you pick the berries, the branches don't come all the way back up. That's, a, that's one of the things that folks have trouble pruning with is they see flower buds and say, oh, I can't cut that out. That's, that's my berries. That's the flowers. But you want to take a third of them out every winter. So you're going to really, uh, really cut these bushes, shape the bushes, and, and thin the crop load uh, quite a bit when you prune it. Pruning will give you big berries. Whereas if you're not pruning, you're going to be picking little tiny berries. So that's, that's one of the phone calls that, that uh, we get uh, routinely is uh, when I planted my blueberries, they were nice and big and sweet, and, and now they're kind of small. They don't have much sugar in them. And what do I need to fertilize them with? Or what do I need to spray on them to make them happy again? And my answer is usually, are you pruning? What happens to a blueberry stem over time? So this is going to be one blueberry stem, and we're going to look at it for three years. So every, every picture you see is the same stem over time. All right? So this is summertime, and you've got a leafy shoot, flower buds out on the end starting, starting to form in the leaf axles. Okay? So that's where the flower buds form. You look at it this time of the year in the winter, there's your flower buds out on the ends of the stem. And then below there, you have these sharp leaf buds that are really inconspicuous, you don't really notice them. But what happens is when the, when the flowers bloom, they get pollinated, they form berries, the berries are out on the ends of the stem, and then those, uh, those leaf buds break dormancy, and you have lateral shoots form. So that's what your blueberry branch looks like when you go out there to pick the blueberry, okay? So if we go to the next winter, uh, there's the same stem, the tip of it dies back, all those leafy laterals went dormant, and they all form flower buds out on their tips. And they all form leaf buds further back. So second year, this is what you get. That old tip died. The berries are smaller, but there's more of them. And again, you get leafy laterals, but they're getting really tiny behind that fruit. So if you leave this branch and don't prune it out, the next year, then the berry size really falls off. What you get looks something like that. Okay, so there's the first year, second year, by the third time that branches, the, the uh, shoots are little matchstick looking things. And they have one, maybe one flower bud out on the end. And so you just branched and rebranched and rebranched, and the berry size really goes down. So you get really, really small fruit if you never prune. So that's what's happening over time. So when we talk about um, Shaping the bush, we're making those big cuts to narrow the base, shape the whole bush, but then the last thing we do is we look up into the bush and look for this. And this is what you're going to prune out when you do your, the final thing. So before you ever get to this stage, you want to shape the bush, do the base, do the crossovers, and then stand up, look at the bush, and say, okay, I've got to take this wood out. You remember the drawings we had in the classroom, okay? There's that first, first year, okay? And so you have all these sharp buds from here down, and above that is, is flower buds. So that's where the flowers are going to be, that's where the blueberries are going to be. So you've got this big long cane, and the berries are going to be out on the end. And then all these leaf buds in the coming season are going to break dormancy and make lateral shoots, okay? So there's, there's year one. Year two is something like this. So you can see probably better on that one. There's that tip that died that we talked about. There's all the lateral shoots below it, and they're all covered with flower buds. So we went from having a few berries on that one whip to having, a, having that tip of that die and all the lateral shoots form, so you get a lot of berries that second year of the age of that cane. All right? So then you go another year and you get that all right so if you look at that i hope you can see that uh, 
not a lot of flower buds remaining on this. Now this is a, an extreme example, but it's still alive. It's still got these little matchstick looking uh, flower buds. Yeah. By the time you get to this little matchstick phase, things have, have really died back and that's what you want to prune out in the winter time. And you'd like to keep as much of this as you can because this is gonna be bigger fruit. And you're gonna keep some of those too that have the, the flower buds just out on the end. So we're just gonna, gonna do that footprint first and anything that's, that's outside, we're gonna cut off. What you're, what you're looking at with these uh, red canes, everything that's red looking grew last year. So just a tremendous amount of growth on this bush. Uh, and a lot of it's coming straight out of the ground. And that's, that's really desirable because you're gonna replace the old canes over time. But we don't want anything that's, that's outside the footprint. So I'll just cut that off to, to start with. Uh, sometimes you get a really nice uh, nice ball of roots with the plant and the, the problem with transplanting those is, is uh, sometimes folks just will not uh, cut the top off. So if you've cut the, uh, if you get a nice root ball and you've cut it away from the mother plant and you leave this whole top on there, that's going to drag down that tiny bit of roots and kill it. It won't survive. So, so just cut it all the way off and then let those roots make a new shoot. When it, when it comes out of the ground, then you'll know you've, you've made another plant. And, and uh, you can either use your pruning shears to cut between the, the mother plant and the, uh, the sprout. Typically, uh, if there's not weed mat down, uh, you can pretty easily cut between the, uh, the mother plant and the, and the daughter plant and get a ball of roots with that plant. So, and that's another nice thing about a little mulch is they root into the bark mulch. So what you would typically see is a mass of roots there around that stem that's the part that's below ground. And what I would transplant is that. And just leave that, leave that stub uh, sticking up out of the ground. And, and you might get a wheelbarrow full of them by the time you got across a planting like this that could start a new row. And when I got out here pruning, I'd be cutting these off and, uh, and putting them in a, a bucket or a wheelbarrow with a wet towel over them so they don't dry out. And uh, and I'd go, when I got tired of pruning, I'd go plant blueberry bushes. What I really am focusing on is, uh, is in addition to uh, pruning out that gray uh, wood that is, that is uh, past its prime, is I'm looking for, for to have an open bush. So I don't really stop pruning until it looks to me like, okay, I can get my hands anywhere in that bush to pick berries. And can you see it pretty well? I know you've got the sun behind you. You can probably see the gray stuff even better than I can. So do you see what I'm taking out? It's just, uh, it's just wood that's, uh, that's older and has turned gray with age. And uh, if the fruit is, uh, is really crowded uh, inside the bush, too, too many twigs, you can just reach in and, and uh, break out like that. Keep the, keep the best ones and break the others out. If I'm trying to, uh, trying to thin out the fruit load on something like that, rather than working out here on the end, uh, I'll, I'll look it over good and then come into the, uh, come into the uh, center of the bush and take out a chunk like that. Up here, and one reason I really hate to even demonstrate it is if you make a cut up here, it, the bush is gonna start growing there and go up. And I don't wanna be picking blueberries up. I want to be picking blueberries from here down. And that's why I spend so much time talking about these big cuts down here. Because if you're making big cuts down low, what you'll get is this age wood with berries where you can reach them. And if you're making all your cuts up here, then the bush is just going to start there and go up towards the sunlight area. So, so you, you want to be able to approach the bush from all sides and, and pick all the fruit off of the bush. So from that standpoint, I'd like to have a, be able to walk all the way around it. Um, but if it's, especially when there's a, a solitary bush or it's at the end of a row, if you wanted to have a big bathtub shaped footprint, that's great. Yeah, you can make the footprint whatever size you, you want. As long as there's access, that's the main thing. With blueberries, they're a woody perennial plant. Eventually you get woody perennial weeds. 
so uh, just have to watch for those and when I'm pruning I'm usually looking for oak trees and things to uh, to take out so we've we've narrowed up the uh, the base of that plant and now I'm going to look for anything down here in the crown that is uh, too thin or too um, or too close to the ground lateral shoots that sort of thing there's not a lot of crossovers in this particular bush so anything that's uh, that's leaning too much or that I don't like to look up I just cut it right off uh, <coughs> excuse me it, it will um, it'll sprout right back from that next winter so you'll get another shot at producing a cane right there yeah. uh, the next thing I do is I move up through the bush and I say okay where are the crossovers what what can I take out uh, based on the fact that it's crossed over? So do you see any branches that are going sideways through the bush? There's actually uh, one right there that's crossing over a little bit, so we can take that whole cane out. Ouch. Yeah. So you're going to make some big cuts. That particular one doesn't have a lot of flower buds on it, but if it was completely covered in flower buds, I still wouldn't hesitate to, to make that cut. You just go ahead and go ahead and make a big cut. So we've got a cane here that's uh, that's a little higher up, but it's it's sort of moving sideways, and you can see a lot of this has already produced fruit. It's got some nice shoots off the side of it, but I'm not going to keep all that. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is very often you can just follow it back and take out the old gray stuff like that. Same sort of thing right there. You could go back to right there. You could also go back to right there and right there. I'm just looking for gray wood, taking it out and leaving this red. That's the younger wood. Okay. Um, we took out um, we took out some decent flower buds and some older stuff. So when I say you're going to take a third of the flower buds out, that's what I'm talking about, and uh, and make some big cuts.